I'm John Elliott on Manhattan's Upper West Side. We use natural gas to heat buildings like this beautiful building behind me here. And when you use natural gas, you get two things. Heat, good. Carbon dioxide, bad. So we want to introduce you to a first of its kind system they're using here that actually captures the carbon before it pollutes the atmosphere. We're in the basement of the Grand Tier, a 30-story residential tower. Their source for heat and hot water is this giant boiler. So this is the boiler going right here, if you look through that little circle. That's a flame! Emissions from this system, like others all over the city and the country, cause pollution and smog. Carbon dioxide is also released. It stays in the atmosphere, traps the Earth's heat, contributing to climate change. Enter Carbon Quest, aiming to disrupt that global warming cycle with a residential system designed to capture CO2 before it's released into the atmosphere. So this is the first carbon capture system that we're aware of in the country being used in this way. Brian Espero is the CEO of Carbon Quest. If it weren't for you, all of the pollution in there would be in the atmosphere, right? Correct. We're recognizing that emissions is creating a big impact on climate change. Cities like New York are taking this seriously and starting to cap emissions in less than nine months. Therefore, it's driving building owners to innovate. And we're just one part of that innovation cycle. The timetable that Aspero is referring to is the implementation of Local Law 97 which, starting next year, will set limits on greenhouse gas emissions from buildings like this. This carbon capture system may be one method to offset these emissions. What is the process? The first step, extract the gas that otherwise gone out the chimney. That's captured right here in these ducts. The second stage is to separate the carbon dioxide from the other gases. The third step is to liquefy that gas. Right now, CarbonQuest is capturing 60% of the CO2 emissions for a 25% reduction of what would be released. Longer term, the goal is 100%. But for now, a week's worth of liquefied CO2 is picked up by truck. And the fourth step is then to transfer that to companies that are using liquid carbon dioxide like concrete manufacturers. And that manufacturing is happening right here at Glenwood Mason in Flatbush, Brooklyn. Plant manager Daniel Polanco oversees the process. The CO2 molecule is introduced into the mixer. It is actually adhered to the cement paste and we process it and make block out of it. So what would have been pollution becomes an element of a building block for something else. Correct. Becomes something sustainable, recyclable, it is CO2 that's entombed into the concrete. CO2 permanently diverted and used in vital building materials. We're taking something bad and making it good. That's Jeff Hansen, a Glenwood Mason VP. How many of these blocks do you make a day? About 35,000 blocks a day. Every single block you make encapsulates CO2. Absolutely, every single block. So these blocks made in New York yes. are taking pollution out of the air of New York. Yes. This may not be the answer, but one possibility, according to the Adams administration, who says, we are currently working on a pilot program to better understand their technology, to determine whether and how it can further the city's decarbonization goals. What this is, is one tool in the toolkit for helping buildings reduce their emissions. It can be equally done together with solar, energy efficiency, lighting upgrades, and now what we're suggesting is let's put carbon capture in that one tool in the toolkit of decarbonization. The next step for Carbon Quest is to put the system in five additional buildings here in the city. With continued success, they plan on installing even more.